just 20 minutes left. Trevor, you can have my head. Thanks, Miranda. Appreciate it. Even when the chips are stacked against me, I take the time to help out others. So if Trevor wants my salmon head, go ahead. You're the best. I'm going to be using strong Asian flavors and techniques to impress Alvin today. This is definitely going to set me apart. Trevor, Trey has two fish heads. Did you salmon have two heads? I borrowed a fish head from Miranda. Why? Because I'm going to be doing some crispy fish eyes, and I wanted more than two. Coming from a Chinese family, the eyes is a very special thing. I'm doing okay? it for you, Chef. Well, I'm so tight because, you know, I never get the fish eye because my mother always takes it, OK? What kind of glaze are you going to do for the salmon? If I'm going to be doing an Asian-inspired glaze. Mm -hmm. I have oyster sauce, some honey for that sugar, get it yes. really nice and caramelized. You have only 45 minutes, remember, OK? Yes, Chef. Trevor. It's an Asian-inspired glazed salmon with crispy skin, crispy eyeballs, and enoki mushrooms. Visually, is stunning. Thank you, Chef. These eyeballs, I mean, they're staring at me right now. There it is. You can see that nice piece of really soft gelatinous. You got it just perfect. Thank you, Chef. Perfect. Now, I'm going to cut into this. What am I going to see? Hopefully a medium rare piece of fish. Look at that. You nail this one. It's perfect cooked on this salmon. That's nice. A fantastic glaze. It's got that sweetness. Thank you, Chef. I would prefer a little bit more glaze. And I told you, OK, to get it nice and thick because that would give it a bit more flavor. Now, what's that? Uh, that is a potato puree. Did you taste it? I did not, Chef. It's grainy. It's bits of raw potato. This is a beautiful dish, but you ran out of time, and unfortunately, it shows on that puree. I tasted every component to my dish except for this puree. That cuts my chances of winning this big time. Are you ready to earn a spot on Jamie Oliver's menu? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your time starts! Wait, wait, wait. Uh, come on. Don't start yet. No idea what's going on at this point. This is weird. We need to be sure that the winning dish is exactly what Jamie Oliver's looking for. Please help us welcome internationally renowned chef. Oh, my god. Jamie Oliver. Hey, guys! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God! Jamie Oliver. He's right here, and he's in front of me. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so exciting. It's so nice to meet you. <gasps> Jamie, with your restaurants opening all across Canada, your new series on Gusto, and everything else you've got going on, you're a very busy man. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I can't wait to see what you're going to do for my restaurant. This is Jamie Oliver. If I'm going to impress anybody in this industry, I want it to be this guy. I have to win this. All right, let's do this. Most of my cooking skills and techniques come from watching celebrity chefs on TV. I would say, to date, this is the most important dish of my life. Jamie Oliver's, like, massive. He's an idol of mine. Trevor. Mr. Oliver. Bring very, here, very buddy. excited to see you, brother. What is going yeah, through So your what head. I'm going to do for you today is a roasted fall vegetable medley. Yeah, like yeah. you're thinking, like you're thinking. I mean, to be honest, I base a lot of my cooking after you. I like your approach to very simple but elevated food. I like you shave your cheese from up here and it yeah. falls all over the plate. They all think I'm doing that for style. It's not. <laughs> it's Even not. distribution. There you go, chef. You crack on. I don't want to stop you. It was an honor to meet you. Beautiful world. Thank it's going to be an honor to try your food. That's enough said. I need to win this. <laughs> the next home cook we like to call up deliver a beautiful concept. Not too simple, not too complicated, but just right. Please bring up your dish. Trevor. Yes. Yes. Win or lose, this is an achievement on its own. This is dream come true. 
What you have in front of you today is a warm fall vegetable salad with a roasted garlic lemon aioli and then some toasted squash seeds and some pecorino cheese. Let's get in there. Plating's very nice. So what do you do for a living? I'm a plumber gas fitter chef. Your pipe work must be beautiful. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. You know, here's the thing. Vegetables are always secondary in a lot of restaurants. And what you've done here is you've made them numero uno. Seasoning very nice and helped along with that pecorino. Very good dish. Thank you. It means a lot, chef. Trevor. Chef Alvin. This is beautiful. Thank you, chef. This is good food. The techniques you have here, you got grilling, you got some saute, and you did the right things for the right vegetable. That's very intelligent. I would say the seeds, it's a bit hard. Maybe the shell them. Other than that, this dish is perfect for any restaurant, including mine. Thank you so much, Chef. Good job. This is wicked. It validates exactly what I came here to prove, and I couldn't be happier. Tight on time. All comes down to this. My dessert is a really rich dark chocolate mint gelato and a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone. Both Taya and Trevor are making ice cream, but Taya started her ice cream when she was plating her main course. It's delicious cinnamon ice cream. Whereas Trevor is just starting his ice cream base now. I am cutting it so close for time on this dessert, this might bite me in the butt. Trevor, yes, how chef. you doing? I'm doing all right, chef. Tell me, what are you making? So right now I'm making a creme fraiche whipped cream with no sugar. It's gonna be very tart because I have a really, really rich dark chocolate mint ice cream going with this. Going back to my childhood, this is a, a play on. The kid just gets his ice cream cone at the stand and he drops it. It's all over the sidewalk. It's gonna be very abstract and splattery. I like where you go with food. There's always a concept behind it. Let me ask you though, do you think that this is elevated enough to win the trophy and the title? 100% chef. This is going to be a knockout dessert, but showing restraint and sophistication at the same time. Let me give you some advice. Don't look back, just keep looking ahead. Thank you, Chef. It means a lot to me. Looking good, Trev. So Trevor is making pizzelles. It is really, it's like an Italian wafer-thin cookie that can be shaped once it's hot into a cone. Perfect for ice cream. Let's go, on. 10 minutes. Taya's cake is out of the oven now. That's gonna be a sigh of relief for her. I need to cool my cakes. Now I need to plate. I'm good. Look at the way Trevor's plating. Trevor is an artist. My hands are shaking like a leaf. I know I need to make sure my plating is absolutely beautiful. There are five minutes left. In five minutes, the MasterChef Canada kitchen will be closed. I go to my ice cream machine, and it's nowhere near being frozen. How's it looking, Trev? <laughs> Trevor is starting to panic because his ice cream is not setting. He's not going to have enough time to set it. If I don't nail this ice cream, I just have a chocolate puddle on a plate. His master chef journey could end right now. Oh, God. The ice cream is the star. I need to get this ice cream really cold. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant. Two minutes. You only have two more minutes left. Two minutes. Come on, girl. You can do it. I'm going to do a little mousse. Oh my god, that looks amazing. That ice cream and that liquid nitrogen, it's got to come out right about now, otherwise it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I got to keep pushing hard to get this dessert. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up and needing a shape. Taya has just bought her ice cream from the blast freezer, and she has one minute to make canals and get it on the plate. This is so much pressure, but I got to shake it off because I need to make the best damn dessert that these judges have ever tasted. There we go. 
Rayo's coming out. Yay! Wow, he's doing it. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint, really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors, that big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. Trevor, what did you find out of your mystery box? Uh, this bad boy here is a pepper grinder that I stole from my mother when I first moved out of the house. It's pepper. I'm a spicy guy. This is my wheelhouse. I'm so stoked. I can't believe I'm top 12. This is, this is freaking awesome. Last week, I was driving a Zoom boom at my construction job. Now I'm cooking in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. I am doing a seared chicken breast, a cauliflower puree, roasted carrots, and a blue cheese mornay sauce. My mom means a lot to me. I'm dedicating this dish to her. I love you, mom. <laughs> come on, come on. The energy in this kitchen right now is incredibly intense. A lot is at stake. The huge advantage that they get if they produce the best mystery box. I smash my heavy cast iron plate right into the front of my glass oven. Are you OK? The oven is completely shattered. I literally destroyed my oven. How am I going to cook chicken? There's no way I can recover from that. I've never seen this happen in this kitchen. These ovens are state-of-the-art quality pieces. I don't know if he's being reckless or just careless. You cannot cook without equipment. Alice? Can I borrow your oven? Go for it, go. Alice really helped me out. I went from feeling totally crushed to now motivated. I can do this. I mean, I know it's a competition and everything, but uh, it just shows what kind of person she is, and I'm very thankful. Trevor. I can't believe I made the top three. When I broke that oven, I thought I was done. So what you have before you there is a pan-roasted chicken breast, a cauliflower puree, a carrot done two ways, and a blue cheese Mornay sauce. It's a work of art, against all odds. I'm curious, what's your reputation? I think people think I'm sort of a goofball, but I mean, I'm here to play. I'm here to play hard. The flavors are so intelligent so well put together. I'm struggling to find an imperfection here, but there's one. You need to use a little bit more sea salt if you have it. Trevor, you have fancy stuff here. Tell me, who taught you all this? I was trained to cook as a young boy, and I sort of developed this plating technique by watching chefs among your stature on television. This is rich. This is sophisticated. You know, I was not professionally trained either. One of the few self-taught mission star chef in this world. And being here in this kitchen is the best opportunity that you will get that I did not get. Thank you, chef. One of you created a dish that stood out a little bit more than the rest. And that home cook is Trevor.
I couldn't be happier getting the very first advantage in this entire competition. Trevor, you are now the cook to beat. My main course is going to be lamb two ways. I'm going to be serving it with a celeriac puree. I'm going to be braising lamb shanks, and I'm going to be braising lamb tongue. Both of my cuts take a really long time to cook, so I'm going with the pressure cooker again. I think the trickiest meat to cook in a pressure cooker is the lamb. There's less fat, and if you overcook that, it's going to become stringy and dry. It's a lot of added pressure, so I'm hoping for the best. It's important for me to nail this lamb for my mama up there watching down. She's the one that introduced me to lamb, and I just want to make her proud today. <laughs> I want to win so bad, my food dream is to open a restaurant. I'm not sure what kind of restaurant. I can tell you it's going to be called Valerie's, so, though, named after my mama. No boy, crab. Stay focused. Just got to get that puree going. The tables have completely turned. Taya is cool, calm, and ready. And Trevor is trying to play catch up. I'm way behind. I'm rushing to get this finished. Look, look, look. It's caught fire. I look over, and my entire pressure cooker is in flame. I put too much port wine in my lamb al sabuco. Whenever you add alcohol into a pot, always make sure that pot starts cold. If it's a very hot pot, it can ignite right away and can take away a lot of hair, like Michael. I mean, <laughs> I had to restart it up. I lost a good 10, 15 minutes of pressure cooking time. You got it. You got it, Trevor. I hope my lamb shanks are tender. I looked down at my lamb, and I couldn't be happier. It's exactly how I envisioned. Beautiful. Get it going, buddy. All right. He's running out of time. My lamb reduction, I got to get reduced before it goes on the plate. It's too fatty. It's too whiny. I'm cutting it really close. And this is a sauce that needs usually hours of reduction. He's going to try and do it in minutes. He is really pushing it now. Keep an eye on that for me. Pull it together. I got to get back on track. I got to be able to plate. My plating is everything. In five minutes, the server will be coming for the entree. Hot, hot. I'm getting frazzled because I don't have that much time to plate. Look at the focus right now. This is next level. You got this, Trevor. Unreal. The first entree the judges will taste is Trevor's braised lamb shank and lamb tongue with celery act puree and vegetables. Judging from looks alone, this is a piece of art. It has this progression of a color to meat. I just love this. He's plating like a true professional chef. Always has, and I think that's one of his strengths. The flavors of the lamb shank, I think, are wonderful. Great depth of flavor. It is cooked beautifully. I would have loved a little bit more of that braising liquor as a sauce reduced and poured over it. His celery root puree, creamy, delicate, well-seasoned, really nice. The shank, nice and tasty. My tongue was nice, soft, and tender. I love these little beetroots. That's an extra touch of earthiness to the dish. I love this dish. The vegetables, I think, are world-class. Perfectly cooked, perfectly cleaned. It's really smart. There's not one ingredient out of place. Absolute perfection.